Hey, what's up, Internet? This is how to change out a break drum, specifically a floating one. Check it out. It's nice. I bought this one at AutoZone, lifetime warranty, like 40 bucks per drum. Easy. My old ones are rusted and they need to be replaced. This one's for an O2 Chrysler Voyager. However, many cars will be just like this. This should take you one to two hours. Uh, if you're an experienced mechanic, it should take you about 30 to 45 minutes. You will need a jack, jack stands, a wheel chalk or a block, and a tire iron. Possibly also some screws or bolts uh, and a ratchet set. You will, you'll see why later uh, if they are needed. A repair manual for your vehicle is also a nice thing to have. Safety first, wear safety glasses. Please do not get hurt. I am not a professional mechanic, I'm just a very experienced mechanic person. <laughs> I also suggest either having a really effective hand cleaner or uh, yeah, to wash your hands or like uh, nylon or latex gloves. Right. So let's get started. First, use a wheel chalk or block to chalk the wheels uh, so the car does not roll away. Put the car in park if you have an automatic transmission or in gear if you have a manual transmission. Do not engage the parking brake, uh, for that will lock the brake and it will need uh, to be not locked. Yes, then lift one side of the car, support it with a jack stand or, or block, I guess. Uh, you may also decide to put the jack under the car like I do here uh, after it's on the jack stand. It's not supporting any weight, it's just there, Take just in, what? <laughs> it's just there in case the jack stand fails. Did the blah. Did the blah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, e exactly. Then remove the wheel. You can see here that I'm using a pneumatic impact wrench. Uh, you can use the tire iron that comes with your vehicle if you if you like. I mean, it's, it works. Uh, you may need to loosen the wheel lug nuts a little prior to lifting the wheel off the ground because it, it, it might just spin around. Uh, once the wheel is removed, set it aside. I like to put it under the vehicle just in case the jack stand fails and the jack backup also fails. And the wheel may be damaged, uh, like if the car were to fall in that situation, but uh, it will not crash completely to the ground. And in the event of that a bodily extremity is in any way underneath the car, it will be less likely to be crushed. Double backup for the win. When the wheel is off, you can see the brake drum. It's possible that you can simply just pull on it and it comes off. Specifically, this brake drum, uh, once again, is a floating type. This means that there are not any screws or bearings like holding it into place when the lug nuts are like after they're removed and the wheel's off. Uh, so yeah, you can just pull it off. Uh, if you have that kind that's held in by the bearings, uh, then you'll, you'll not be able to just pull it off like the way I do in this video. Sorry, I don't have an example of how to do that uh yeah maybe maybe in another video but uh, uh for my situation uh i am unable to pull the brake drum off there could be two reasons for this reason one the parking brake is on and it's like lock the brake drum in place reason two it's just rusted in place which it is in this case um it does however have threaded holes that when bolts are screwed into them apply pressure to pull the brake drum and loosen it loosen it up so I went uh, through my box of random bolts and I found one that fit and I just used my impact wrench and the bolt and as you can see here and it loosened up the drum I was able to just pull it off after that uh, so yeah uh, after the drums knocked off or knocked off <laughs> after the drums knocked loose uh, you should be able to just pull it off uh, I just simply change out the drum for this video so uh, if I make another video showing you how to change the actual brake pads. Uh, I'll link it in the description below and in the eye in the corner of this video. Uh, replacement of the drum or, or installation of the drum is the same as reverse uh, of, you know, removal. However, you should only have to simply push the drum back on and not like tighten. Well, are you okay, Lou Man? <laughs> and not like tighten the drum on. You should be able to just push it all the way on. If it gets caught halfway, uh, you gotta just deal with it uh, maybe pull it off and, and try it again uh, yeah and if you cannot put the drum on because the brake pads are in the way you'll need to try to press against them they're, they're actually brake shoes that's what these kinds are called and uh, maybe it'll like retract some so that you can fit the drum over them yeah you just like place your hands on the pad and just like, ah, like squeeze it 
and I don't have an example. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, I'm just trying to just trying to crank out videos. You know, I'll get better as I make more. Uh, once the drum is on, you're done. Uh, I choose to coat this drum with a coat of rust oleum spray paint, uh, just to keep the rust from forming so quickly. Right? Uh, if you choose to do this, be mindful, please, of overspray and try not to do this near other vehicles. We had in our last place I was at, some dude was like spray painting his car in the middle of the parking lot. There's just overspray was getting all over everyone's vehicles. It was it was crap. It was crap. Uh, yeah. And also, I recently bought this jack from Harbor Freight. Uh, when I make a review video on that, I will link it in the description below and in the eye in the corner of the screen as well. Yeah, okay, that's it. You change your brake drum, I hope. Uh, yeah, don't forget, be safe. Uh, if you like this video, there's a button for that. If you want to see more videos like it, there's a button for that. And I also have some other car-related videos on my channel, so check those out if you're bored. Well, I hope that helped. See you later, Internet.